All right. Time to get rolling, my friends. We've got a lot to cover today. So thank you for joining. If you have questions along the way, please do drop them into the chat. It's in focus mode, so I'll be able to see what's coming through. You might not be able to see all the participants and all that jazz, but don't worry about that. I've got it under control, and we will get moving today. So welcome. Today, our chat is about leveraging your 9 to 5 for a 10x brighter future. So that's a 10 times brighter future than if you stayed on the course that you're on right now. So really looking forward to diving in. Any thoughts, questions you have along the way, drop them in chat. I'll make sure to monitor as we go. Okay, into the good stuff as we go. So who is this for, first off? This is a very important question that we want to make sure we're on the same page with first. I'm talking to ambitious corporate professionals. So you're in a nine to five of some sort, and you're just really wrestling with a few things. Number one, you've got this idea, you've got this problem where you are this raving success on paper, you know, from the outside in, people will look at you and say, wow, you've really got your stuff together. You really have a great life, a great career path. Secondly, though, you're carrying this heavy burden inside of you. You feel burned out, you're stuck, you're not fulfilled. Something inside is painful. You know you want more, but you really don't know what that is. You want more out of work and life. You feel the path you're on isn't getting you where you want to be fast enough, but you don't know what you want instead or how to get there. So that's really what we're wrestling with here today on how to make sure that we get ahead of that sort of thing. Now, I also want to clarify who this presentation is not for today. If you're just starting your career, it's not for you. You haven't had enough runtime yet. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Secondly, if you're satisfied with falling in line, trust me, you won't like my message. You won't like me. So you can sign off now. Thirdly, if you're content or happy with what you have, this presentation is not for you either. Mm -hmm. And fourthly, You've got to be willing to, uh, to to question everything in your life and in your career. Those are the people that I really connect with. That's who this presentation is for. So if you're unwilling to question all of that, we're not going to vibe so well. Now, I want to get on the same page to see if you see yourself in the scenario that I'm talking about here. So does any of this sound like you? Do you wake up on Monday morning just dreading what's to come? Are you feeling just this complete lack of joy and meaning at work? Does it feel like you're just wasting all your time on the job just because that's what everyone else does and you follow in line? And say you've got family, you've got loved ones, right? You say you're around them, you say you're present for them, but are you really there or are you not proud of how you're showing up with them? A few other symptoms. Maybe you've got this fantastic life on paper, but you feel dead inside. That was me. I had to admit that. That's how I got to a better state. Do you feel like you're chained to a paycheck? We have to keep plugging into the W-2, keep getting the paycheck because life without it feels crippling, scary, impossible. Do you feel that if you keep going down this path, climbing that ladder, it'll actually just collapse on you? Because as you know, you go over year over year, there are other forces out there, younger generations, and it's scary. Do you feel like that ladder is going to collapse? And lastly, this is a very important one. Are you living a life you're proud of or just one that others scripted for you? Important conversation here. We need to make sure we're on the same page with this, okay? Now, this comes down to the big question. The big question at play is this. Are you secretly terrified that your nine to five career is going to prevent you from living a full life? That's what's at stake here. That's what we're wrestling with. That's why you're here in this conversation with me is because you know what you're getting out of that state with the nine to five world is not going to unlock the freedom, the life you actually want. So here's my promise to you and why I value you spending time with me today on this conversation. This is it. I want to help you learn to convert your nine to five job into an asset 
that you can generate exciting returns for decades with. So just like you put money in a stock market or you buy a rental property, you want returns, right? You want cash flow. You want to see growth in that. Same thing, but we can take it to a higher level. Your nine to five is that asset and you can use it to generate great return on investment in other ways too. So that's what we're really getting into. So I framed this conversation as wanting to 10x your better life, to get to a life that feels 10 times better in every way. So why am I focusing on that number? May seem a little bit arbitrary, a little impossible, but that's the point. I'll ground you in this book that's actually about to be released. It's called 10X is Easier Than 2X by Dan Sullivan and Benjamin Hardy. And I love this thought. I've ingrained it in my soul for years now. But if you think about, if you're going down your current path, climbing the ladder in your organization, staying in your career path for decades, let's call that an incremental approach to growth. You just keep getting the 3% boosts. You keep getting a little bit better, a little bit more reward. Let's call that the 2X path. Now, what you're doing there is you're fighting with everyone else who's playing that exact same game. It's like being in your a large corporation and you're fighting for a promotion. Everyone's fighting for that promotion. It is competitive, difficult, and it's a tough game to play. In turn, if you were to play a different game, say a 10X game, where you are aiming differently, you are behaving differently, you don't have nearly as much competition and it's a lot freer for your growth. So here's that visual. If you see left to right of that gray line, that's the 2X path. And you feel that in your heart right now. You stay on the corporate ladder, you stay down your current path and all making the same decisions as everyone else. That just leads to incremental change. It's like keeping up with inflation. It doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel like freedom's coming. But if you choose a 10X path and you really aim higher and you do things that are way different than everyone else, that's when you see that upward swing. That's when you see that exponential change in your life. So 10X is easier than 2X, but it's a completely different game. It requires different aims and different behaviors across this, okay? So that's why I'm focusing on 10X growth with you. Now, quick before we get into it, who I am, I'm a transformational coach these days. I'm a podcaster. I create content every day. I'm a speaker. I have clients around the world from a coaching perspective. And before all that, I spent 15 years in management consulting, helped with lots of Fortune 500 corporations and government agencies around the world. But more importantly, that was the foundation for what I'm doing now, where I'm really in my zone of genius, in my passion. And it took 15 years to get to this point where now I really help corporate professionals create personal freedom in their lives, learn how to understand and monetize their gifts and make sure they're there for loved ones. That's my specific mission. Now, why is that? Backstories matter, right? So you can understand the energy coming here and my why. I spent my first decade in corporate and I loved it. It did a lot of great things. But I hit a breaking point at the 10-year mark, and I lost everything. I lost a marriage. I lost primary access to my three kids, and my health went to crap mentally and physically. And at that moment, I had a choice to make. So I spent the next five years not just wallowing in my pain, but rebuilding version 2.0 of myself. So I vowed to create a life of freedom while keeping my stable job. Because I had the large family, lots of lifestyle, all these things I had to maintain. I couldn't just let go of the paycheck and the benefits, right? So the question was, how do I create freedom in the corporate world, even the demanding nine to five that I had, which was more like a nine to nine, to be honest. So that was the challenge. And I figured out how to do that in great ways. So now these days, I teach these same strategies to people who are in the same need. So if you found yourself in that scenario I described at the beginning where corporate's overtaking your life, you don't feel good about it, you're hopeless, <laughs> you want freedom, you're talking to the right person right now and you're in the right place. So that's enough about me. And apologies, I'm going pretty quick here because we've got a lot of ground to cover and I wanna give you as much information as possible. And feel free to drop anything into the chat along the way because we'll do a Q&A at the end. Now, 
We've talked about leverage, right? We are talking about how to leverage your nine to five for a 10X brighter future. That's the concept of today. So what's leverage, right? Let's get clear on this. Leverage looks like this. Well, let's go back to the OG, Archimedes, when he said, if you give me a lever and a place to stand, I can move the world. It's about making sure you have the right levers and you are using them to create massive impacts, massive returns. Now, simply said, what's that mean in your world? Leverage is just using a resource to amplify your results. Today, that resource is your nine to five job. And we'll unpack that here in a second. But we want to use a single resource that we already have to get bigger results in our life. Rather than just accepting the status quo, we want to use them to our advantage. And you can think about a very common example where you might get a resource like a mortgage, which is a form of debt. So you get that resource, you do the work to acquire that resource, and then you use it as a form of leverage to buy a property that you couldn't otherwise afford. If you've only got 100K in the bank, but you need a million dollars to acquire that property, you use that resource as leverage. That mortgage is leverage for you to get what you want, which is a 10 times bigger property than you could afford with cash only. So we want more leverage. We're going to use leverage in our lives. So know this right now. I don't care what job, what industry you're in. You have incredible leverage at your disposal right now. And you might not think that, you might not understand what I'm talking about yet, but have faith. And I want you to understand what those pieces are. So let's look at those. Here's some common areas of nine to five leverage, assets that are already at your disposal right now. First, your skills. You've been compounding this for five, 10, 15, 20, 25 years. Your scenario doesn't matter, but you've been growing these skills, this unique combination of things that, yes, you've been paid well for, ideally, right? You want to be paid well, but they're trapped within the corporate construct. You've got a job, you deploy those skills within that small box, but they're not unleashed in the world in a big way. So you've got this magnificent set of gifts that are trapped right now, barely being used. Secondly, you've got a paycheck, right? You're in W-2 land. You've got a paycheck of some sort. We can use that in better ways. We know, obviously, we can funnel that to make sure that we are paying for shelter and for our family's needs and all those things, but it can be used in other ways too. And this is probably one of the more obvious ones. Thirdly, you've got experiences. No one is you. No one can copy you. You are one of one. Your set of circumstances, experiences, worldviews, interests, all of those are one of one, like an NFT, completely unique, okay? And you've got to be able to understand those, embrace them, and use them as assets in the world. Fourthly, you have relationships, ones that you are likely not taking full advantage of whatsoever. You've met people, you can get access to people, your reputation, your skill set, your job, your titles can all open doors to relationships that you are not yet scratching the surface on. These are all assets at your disposal that are generated by you being in nine to five land for a number of years. We need to cash those things in. We need to use them to create personal freedom in your life. But we suck at leveraging these assets, straight up. I sucked at using them. Most people I meet suck at using them. So why is that the case? Well, most people just incrementally upgrade their life. So they say, ah, I'm gonna use those skills and that reputation and I'm going to get a slightly better job, which in turn gets me a slightly better income. I'm outpacing inflation by 1%, life's good. But you don't feel good, that's why you're here, okay? Now, in this scenario, you're not using those assets at all. You're just staying inside the corporate box. They're saying, here's your job description, operate within these boundaries, here's your paycheck. And you know you're operating at a fraction of your potential and therefore you're capturing a fraction of the value, the income, the impact that you could otherwise be achieving. Now, instead, here's your opportunity, is to take all those assets, 
skills, relationships, paycheck uh, experiences and turn them into a compounding force. We want to be able to squeeze all the juice out of that nine to five lemon that you have right now. Right now, you're not taking all that you can get out of corporate. You're taking the paycheck. Yes, you're taking the benefits, but you could get so much more in that relationship. And when I say turning these nine to five assets into a compounding force, it's just like the stock market, my friends. It's about putting some in every week, every month, and letting it take time to grow and create outsized returns. Same concept, but you've got to learn to use these nine to five assets so that you can unlock this 10x better life, this better career for yourself. Now, here's some examples just to make it a little bit more real. This is a basic one that I think most people can wrap their heads around, but you've got a paycheck, right? It's coming in and yes, we're using it to pay for expenses in our lives, but how can you use that paycheck to create more paycheck? I love this one, the nine to five millionaire. So you can think about the various stages. So in stage one, you've got your income, right? Your check's coming in through a salary. You want to be able to pay expenses, yes, but we also want to funnel that into an asset like a rental property, like the stock market. Used to be crypto, no longer the case. But you know what I'm getting at? Because when you get one asset going in a smart way, and there's plenty of great advice out there, start with rich dad, poor dad, whatever you need to, to be able to get to the concept of I need more assets in my life so they bring me cash. And then in stage two, that income and those paychecks help you build another asset and another asset. You've heard this a lot, I know, but say you've got a portfolio of rental properties that you've got out there in the world, or you're into multifamily investments, whatever it is, and you're getting more cash flow, passive income. Everybody wants passive income. But what you see right here is the act of work to create passive income. You up your salary strategically, you funnel it into cash flowing assets. Those cash flowing assets help you buy more cash flowing assets. And you've got passive income at scale that gives you life options. That's where we want to be, right? So this is just one very common example of how to take your paychecks and create cash flow. And through that cash flow, we can unlock that 10x better life. We can buy back our time. We can hire people to help clean our home or our property. We can make sure that we are having better experiences with our family because we've got that cash flow. That leads to the 10x better life because you've been using a nine to five asset, which is a salary in a smart way to upgrade your life. Now let's go into another example. Your skills and your experiences. I think people are leaving a ton on the table right now, a ton. And you're just using your knowledge, your gifts within a small box of the nine to five. So think about it in terms of how do you create your own business from those skills and experiences. And this is in addition to keeping your nine to five paycheck. I will tout this all day. Keep the stability of your nine to five for a long time. Do this and on your terms, optimize that job. Do not let it overrun your life, but keep that paycheck. It is a gift. And secondly, use that to build a business of your own, because this is where you can find joy, passion, meaning, unlimited income. So when we unpack your skills and experiences and we target them appropriately, you can be someone that's getting the message out there. Like this looks in the form of you on stage. Maybe this is you monetizing through a podcast. This is you building a personal brand. And you might say, ew, personal brand. I don't want to be one of those people. No, 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 my friends. Everyone, you and I, and all the people you and I will ever meet has a personal brand. It's just our reputation, okay? And if you learn to take your reputation outside of the corporate world and funnel it externally, you can create so much more income and joy in your own business if you learn to do this appropriately. It's not easy, but it's totally worth it, in my opinion, when you learn to take your reputation and make, for, make it work for you out there in the world. Next thing you know, maybe you've got a product or a service you're bringing to the world. For me, I have 
for example, a group coaching program, which is my signature offering, where I bring people in, I transform their relationships with their corporate world and help them build a one person business. And this is an example I, you know, I'm on Zoom with people every week. And this creates great joy and fulfillment for me. It changes their lives and it helps me earn a really good living. So this is just you embracing your skills and experiences and then converting that into a one-person business. So you're not subject to so many layoffs and economic conditions and you're just beholden to an employer. You have made yourself recession-proof when you take this step. You create opportunities for yourself and your family when you do this, okay? How you do this, this is a complex thing. Simply shown, I like what Kyle Kowalski has from slow.co, which is a great website. Um, you might have heard of the Japanese concept of ikigai, but at the core, what you're trying to marry up is a combination of things. What you love and what you're passionate about, number one. Secondly, what you're naturally gifted at, what you're naturally talented at, number two. And then thirdly, let's be clear on what the world needs, what people will pay for, what pains they need solved. When you marry those things up, that's the intersection where you focus the building of a of business. When you talk about a one-person business, keeping it small, lean, on the side from a nine to five, this is where you can create outsized returns for your life. And just think for a moment, if you were doing something every day that is something you love, that's something you're naturally gifted at, and the world needs it, what joy would you be experiencing? And when you're operating at that level of joy and you're in your zone of genius and you feel energized, hell yes, you're going to earn good money. Hell yes, you're going to unlock other opportunities for your family and for yourself. This is the place to be when you want to augment salary when you want to find joy outside of corporate land. Personally, I lost any joy in corporate land. It didn't provide any meaning for me anymore. So I had to go create my own fulfillment. And this is a, a representation of how you get there. Again, there's a lot to unpack, a lot to experiment with, but this is what you need to think about. And let's be very real. The need to do something like this to create something like a business of your own you, if you look at how income stagnates over time, this is general population over the last few years. It flatlines. This is from American public over the last few years. And you can see it flatlines and you lose the ability to keep growing in most cases. And your living expenses grow and your ideas for what you want your life to be keep growing. And yet your income is not. And we have to do something about that to get that big upward swing, to get big growth back in our lives. So it matters. So maybe right now you're saying, hey, Matt, this all sounds great. How do you really do this stuff? How do you really make an impact and create a 10x better future? How do I leverage my nine to five? Well, I'm glad you asked. Let's get into that. It comes down to what I call the five shifts. You have to make these five shifts in your world, or this is not possible. Again, our goal here is to take our nine to five, which is this incredibly valuable asset that most of us write off and just get pissed off at. Instead, we need to value it and cherish it and maximize it. And you do it through these five shifts. First shift, you need to take extreme ownership of your situation. Most people get overrun by a demanding job and their life takes the hit. That's a sad state. I remember that feeling quite well. Right now, you're trapped in your version of the matrix. You know what you know and you, you know, you're plugging along with cultural norms and doing what the job says and you're living a good life, but you're not living a great life, which is really what you're after here. You've succeeded at some level, right? But at huge costs and you're wrestling with what those costs are right now. Maybe it's your health, your time, time with loved ones, income. There's lots of costs that you've been incurring by staying on your current path. You just got to be able to wake up here and realize that for a long time, you haven't been the one in control. You've been following the leader in many cases. 
this was me. Like, I'm so, so guilty of this. And we all are because we just look up at the people that come before us and we follow in their footsteps, especially at a nine to five. You look up and say, I want to be promoted. Yeah, let me follow the same path that that person ahead of me did. And then you do the same things, but it doesn't feel good. Reality is that you've got a lot at stake. You've got to take extreme ownership over your situation, your health, your family, your freedom, your happiness, your joy, your income. This is all at stake and you have to get very clear. Have your moments in the mirror. Take extreme ownership over what's happening because you've got to do something radically different if you don't like where it's going. So I love this concept from the entrepreneur, Tom Bilyeu. He says, everything is my fault. And you could get pissed off at that, right? You could say like, no, it can't be my fault. Everything can't be my fault. Or you could see it's a sense of responsibility that I have ownership. I have control over what I experience, what I do, what I feel. And when you get to that state, that's when you're in an extreme ownership mentality. That's when you are the driver. You are no longer just in the backseat given driven around in your career and your life, but you are the one calling the shots. And you've got to be able to do this very tactically. And when you do it, you're able to control your precious time. I get all the time people coming to me saying, Matt, I'm working 10, 11, 12 hour days. My family doesn't see me. I do dinner for an hour, then I'm back to work. I can't unplug from the stuff on the weekends. I can't stop thinking about the next task. I can't get any joy out of it. My time is not mine. I don't have time for my true life priorities, my family, my health, my interests, my hobbies, charities, philanthropy. I can't do any of that because I'm trapped. And when you take it instead, you get this extreme owner mentality. You start to rapidly build freedom in your life. You are like, nope, this is my life, my decisions. Even though I work for someone else, I'm going to call the shots here. And it's a mentality switch that leads to a very different day-to-day -day situation for you. And you begin to strip emotion out of the way and you start to see your nine to five is merely a tool. It's a utility. It is not where all your purpose or meaning is. None of that. It's just a utility to help you unlock a better life. And when you do this, you become what I call self-directed, self-reliant. You are no longer being pulled around like a rag doll. You are the one calling the shots. You've got to take this shift for yourself. You've got to unpack this and see what it means. But to take extreme ownership over your career and life is a vital shift. Second one, you need to value time above everything else. So I work with a lot of high achievers, like director levels on up generally within corporate organizations, even some entrepreneurs. And here's what it looks like. They're after the salary, promotions, credentials, networking. They're all about getting ahead, making sure that their life is getting better by measures that others have defined for them. Now, where does this lead? Well, a calendar that looks like Skittles threw up. That's usually what it looks like Monday through Friday, and then it bleeds into the weekend. That's a problem because the costs of having no time are massive. Marriage, health, time with children, money, joy, happiness, all takes a nosedive when you don't value time above everything else. The most successful, happiest people I've ever met, whether they're in corporate, on their own, or somewhere else, value time above everything else. It is the one non-renewable asset that is so vital and it's gone once it's gone, every second lost. And that's why I value you spending this time with me today because you definitely could have spent it in a thousand other ways. Now, when you value time above everything else, here's what it looks like. You know what it's worth. You protect it fiercely and you use it very carefully. I love what the entrepreneur Naval Ravikant said about this. He said, set an hourly rate for yourself and make it absurdly high. Naval, early in his career, he said his hourly rate is $5,000 an hour. So any request of his time, he said, is it worth $5,000 an hour? Now, it doesn't have to be that number for you, but when you think about valuing your time against a monetary figure, you think about yes and no very differently. You make your decisions very carefully. There's only a few things that get yes. Most things get no because you've understood how your time is spent on the things you actually value. So this leads us to the third shift. 
after you've taken extreme ownership and you value your time, we have to deploy what I call the uncaged method. This is vital for leveraging your nine to five and creating that better life for yourself. Now, the old way that we subscribe to in the nine to five world is one of two things. On one end, we climb the ladder, just keep enduring pain. And you're experiencing pain because I know you're here. <laughs> and you keep getting more and more notoriety, salary, compensation, titles. That's one option. The other end of the spectrum is to run screaming from the nine to five saying, screw you, corporate, I'm out. And it's felt like this split, this choice between one of the two, either climb the ladder or escape the nine to five. And it feels like polar opposites that we have to choose from. That's an old model of thinking about your options. I'd like to introduce a third one or a new one, actually. The new way is this, the uncaged method. And it has three components. Number one is owning your nine to five. You have to have extreme <laughs> mastery over how you're showing up there. For example, I told you I used to work nine to nine on average, right? 12 hour days. When I took control, I turned it into five hour days. Everyone else around me was still working like crazy. And I got down to an average of five hour days while still getting promoted, while still getting good reputation and leadership opportunities and these sorts of things. But it took me taking ownership over that situation. Secondly, you have to get very clear on the intentional life you want because you have to know where you're going. You have to get energy, motivation, purpose, a why to actually deploy this method that I'm describing here. And then thirdly, as we're creating more leverage in our life, we need to ignite that entrepreneurial side. We need to make sure that we're creating something of our own because you will never get wealthy financially, health-wise, spiritually, without being entrepreneurial. You're just not going to find it in the nine to five world. It's because you didn't create that opportunity. You're getting plugged into a system and you might find occasional moments of bliss and reward, but it doesn't sustain you in the long term because it's not unique to you. It's not custom for who you are as a person. But when you're an entrepreneur, again, on the side from your nine to five, you actively get to customize that. You get to serve the people and the problems in this world that you value and you get to make a great living from it at the same time. I call that idea uh, hybrid entrepreneurship. And we unpack that in great detail, but it's essentially you get the best of both worlds, the stable paycheck at minimal hours, plus you're building the prosperity of your entrepreneurial business where you're getting unlimited income, you're finding purpose, joy, meaning, all grounded in the intentional life that you want to live. So this is the uncaged method, the new way of thinking about how do you use the nine to five world and start creating leverage. And when you do this, you get out of that burnout situation. You start reclaiming your precious time and energy. You do what matters most to you rather than plugging away at stuff that you don't value. And you get to take those gifts that are lying dormant inside of you right now and unleash them on the world, unleash them in a way that you can monetize and feel damn good about. And that's most important, right? Because right now, nine to five stuff, most cases is not making you feel very good about how you're spending your time, your precious time on this earth. But if you unleash your gifts and you help others and you earn a good living at the same time, whole different ballgame. And if you do this well, this is how you build freedom. You understand the assets you have in your nine to five, your skills, your experiences, your relationships. All those things are assets that you can deploy to create more freedom in your world. This 10x better life. Fourth shift then is you have to be the architect. This is the glue that holds all these shifts together. So we've talked about taking extreme ownership, valuing time above everything else, and then applying the uncaged method where you become entrepreneurial. This is only possible though, if you are the architect of all this, you are the designer. Every day you wake up, you take the pen, you say, this is how I will be. This is what I will do. And it's not about just conforming to what everybody else asks you to do at the job or personally, but you are the architect of your own career and of your own life. All of this is only possible if you are the architect. Now, 
to be the architect, I want to frame up a test for you to see if you think you are architecting your own life. So I'll ask you, rhetorical question right now, what is your work strategy? Do you even have one? Do you know what I mean by that? Secondly, how is that work strategy impacting your career trajectory? Is it just flatlining or is it swinging up into the right in a big way? Thirdly, what does this trajectory mean for time freedom and financial freedom in your life? And lastly, what life is this approach creating for you and your family? And isn't that what we really want is to live a full, exciting life for ourselves and our loved ones? That's the ultimate aim for most people. It's not about the money. It's not about exactly how we're spending our time, but it's that feeling that you can feel proud of day after day that this is a world that you created for yourself and your loved ones. So when you're the architect, know these things. You don't have to take extreme ownership over your job. It's your right to just continue on as you are. You don't have to be entrepreneurial. Totally my suggestion, right? You don't have to listen to me. But I promise you, it is the fastest way to end this state of burnout and to feel alive again and to create real time and financial freedom in your world while being there for your loved ones. Let's be clear, just staying plugged into the nine to five world, doing what they're asking you purely leads you to this state of feeling trapped, imprisoned. You know that feeling. So you've got to be the architect of your own career and of your own life. This brings us to the fifth and final shift. This is invest in mentoring. And I say this from experience, my friends. You have to do this because the clock is ticking on you. You have to do it because you know you can't do it alone. You don't have the experience, know-how, or strategy. And if you do it well, you find the right partnership, you can compress decades of transformation into days. And there are so many ways to get this wrong, everywhere from reinventing your, your job as a utility to starting down an entrepreneurial path to designing a life that fulfills you. There are so many ways you can get this wrong if you've never tried it before. And the idea of mentors provide they provide great accountability, structure, ideas to get you going, get you moving fast so that you can compress decades into days. Now, I'll give you some examples of bad ways of going about mentoring. One is when you try to do it alone, when you just try to absorb all the books and the podcasts and you get another certification, or you just keep looking at social media posts and you think you're growing, you think you're learning but you're really not taking massive action in your world. You're not actively changing your work situation. You're not unlocking more freedom. You don't know how to turn your job into an asset. You don't know these things just by listening and reading stuff. Or you come up with excuses or the timing isn't right. I can't afford it. I've never invested like this before. That's a mentality shift that's going to keep you stuck. Instead, the people that get this right are people that understand the best mentor for them. They get into proven strategies and they do the work to make sure they get the outcomes. They put skin in the game. Skin in the game means you put real money, time, and energy into getting the change you need in your life. And if you're just passive about it, or frankly, you're not spending much money, like that does a very tangible indicator that you're going to get an outcome. You're putting serious money into something because it signals to your brain, oh shit, we are serious about this thing. So-and-so just put a lot of money forward. I'm putting my attention there. Your attention flows where your money goes. That's just a how we're wired. I don't know if it's since capitalism or when it started, but it's how we're wired. Look back and when you've bought a house, bought a car, made a, any major purchase, you put a lot of focus on that, right? Same here, skin in the game. <sighs> so those are the five shifts. Everywhere from extreme ownership, valuing time, the uncaged method, being the architect, and investing in mentoring. These are vital things you must do to get leverage out of your nine to five. Today, I promised exactly that, how to leverage your nine to five for a 10 times brighter future. Now, you have a choice right now. You can go back to your day and continue on as you were and not do anything different. Or you could take these things to heart 
and you can start making some drastic changes in your world. And you can look at this recording again later. I'll make sure you have access to it to review, but you have a serious choice. Stay on the path that you're on or do something wildly different. And I want to set aside an opportunity for you right now. This is just me giving you a chance to have a conversation you've never had before. And I want to speak with you personally about applying these ideas. I'm not here to sell you anything. I'm not here to close you. I want to give you an opportunity to dive deep on your situation. I'd like to invite you to book a 45-minute breakthrough call with myself and my team. Here's what we'll do together. We'll look, number one, at a personalized view of what's holding you back in your life, in your career. Your job is limiting you. You want to leverage it. We need to understand what's the problem. Secondly, we'll get extreme clarity on what life can be like instead once you get out of this caged feeling where your job is dominating you and you have no leverage from your nine to five. And thirdly, we'll talk about the exact game plan for getting more time, freedom, and that trajectory towards a life that excites you. So that's my offer to you. I'm not here to sell you anything, just to offer a conversation. I hope based on this talk today that you get the essence of what we're going for. And if that's something you want, please do book this call. I, I invite you to big time because you're gonna get the clarity you need to take leverage from your nine to five to create this better life, this better career. You're not gonna do it alone. I'm sorry, you won't. I wasn't able to. I've had 10 coaches in my life at this point. I've had countless programs. I've invested 200,000 plus in my own investment and growth to make this happen. And I want you to understand it takes work for you to get there too, okay? So I'm doing this because it's deeply personal. I told you my story early on. I've been where you are. The nine to five can be dominating, soul sucking. You know you need more impact, more joy, more fulfillment, more freedom in your world. So that's what I want to aim with you is to get into that conversation and help you get there. It doesn't matter if we work together in the future. I just want to help you in the course of this call. You will not be sorry. So you can book it over at matthewdone.com forward slash talk. Again, the link will be in what I send you later, but that's besides the point. If you want to go into the conversation, that's how you do it. I know we're moving fast, my friends, but I want to leave us with what, again, a great mentor of mine, virtually, Naval Ravikant said. He says, embrace accountability and take business risks under your own name. Society will reward you with responsibility, equity, and leverage. When you take this self-directed approach, when you are reliant on yourself, everything can change in a hurry. Don't just plug into the nine to five world. Don't just take that for what it is, right? You can be so much more. You can have so much more. And I want you to have that. So that's what I have today. I hope it helps. I'm open to having any chats come through, any conversations, questions here to answer them. I had one come by earlier. I can start with that if you guys are formulating any questions. Um, one that came by, which was, okay, you know, this leverage idea sounds good. What's the first step? If you look back to one of the points I made in the third shift, the uncaged method, is that you must create space in your world. There will be no big change in your life, in your career, without creating space. You need time, energy, and mental capacity in your days. That is the first priority. If you don't do that first, no progress will be had. You can have all the dreams in the world, so you've got to create space. Space is the place where miracles happen, so you need to do that as a starting point. Any other questions? If not, I will answer two of my most common ones from there, just so you guys have some Q&A. So another thing I get asked often time, it's, <laughs> it's what's the biggest challenge in turning your nine to five into an asset that you can leverage? Fear. This is the biggest challenge. Most people feel this pressure in their heads that they need to show up at work the same way as everyone else. They see all their bosses, their peers doing the same thing, saying yes to all the same meetings, going to all the same networking events. And it's debilitating because 
you give yourself no agency, no choice, no ability to create your own days, create your own experience at work. So you have to get out of the sphere by running little experiments for yourself. You have to show yourself that it's possible to step out of the norm and design your own day-to-day -day experience at work, to hold true to your preferences, to your values, to say no to certain projects, to say no to most meetings. <laughs> like this takes a lot of bravery, no doubt. It's scary, but you've got to get out of your heads and engage those fears. Hmm. Last question I'll answer is something that comes up a lot. Do you have to leave your nine to five to feel free? I will tell you, most people should not do this. We should not go run screaming from our nine to five. It is a valuable asset, especially in these times. Look at the economic conditions right now. Look at what's transpiring and understand that most people are not wired for full-time entrepreneurship. It takes on a lot of risk, a lot of pressure. It, it is a lot. I'm someone that is now doing this on my own, and it is not for the faint of heart. But I go back to that idea of the uncaged method, where you understand how to optimize your job, squeeze all the juice out of that lemon, but then build something of your own on the side. This is not a side hustle. I don't want you hustling because you're just going to burn out there too. But there's a very methodical way that you can make that small, lean, enjoyable, and over time profitable. Some people get to the point where they say, yep, it's time for me to leave. Nine to five land no longer suits me. And that is a very admirable conclusion, but it's not one to jump too quickly. Most people should not leave nine to five land full time. It is it's very risky and very high pressure, especially if you have a lot of responsibilities, like a large family, big mortgage, multiple cars, whatever it is. So understand how to find that middle ground. That's where I live is that middle ground. I believe in it so much. I, I will beat that drum all day. So think about what is that middle ground? Don't just rush to leave your job. Eventually it might make sense, but don't make that your end goal out of the gate. First, take ownership over your situation. One question that came through is how do we get to a framework to move forward? I think a framework to move forward is, is what I laid out in the five shifts. Now, there's got to be a lot of detail you unpack. For example, the first one is taking extreme ownership. At first glance, that's a concept, right? But then you ask yourself, how do I apply that to my unique job and life? How do I take extreme ownership over all the pieces of what I experience every single day? And then you create a, a master plan for yourself, right? And you start running experiments to make it better and better and better. And next thing you know, over a few weeks, you've created a lot of space for yourself. You are a different person. You've carved a new identity for yourself. And that identity is not one who's just subservient or imprisoned anymore by the job. It's someone that is in control no matter where they are. So you've got to unpack those five steps in a way. Uh, that is custom to your world. Another one that came through. An ex what's an example of an action or suggestion? Um, oh, on a past call. So hmm, when I have breakthrough calls with people, a lot of it is less about the specific actions. The first thing we need to do is get to clarity about why taking a different route is so important. And we have to get mentally, emotionally committed to this is no longer tolerable. I can't get to this state. And then when you get to that state where you realize that nine to five job is not going to serve you, it's not going to give you joy and you're going to feel regret over time. That's step one. And then a corresponding action from that might be as far as let's go design your ideal week. I love that. We get to that oftentimes, which is, okay, blank slate. If you had no constraints, if you had no job, how would you allocate your week? Where would you spend your most precious time? Where would your time with yourself, with exercise, with time with family, other priorities in your life, where do those things show up? Step one. And then step two, layer in, what are some must do's 
from your nine to five? Where do I put those in? Again, more on your terms, not on someone else's terms. Where do I slot those? And then how do I step back and say, yep, that is a week that feels right to me. It's balanced between what I value most and what's being asked of me by an external employer. And then there's a middle ground there where you feel more in control. Cool. Anything else? Well, everyone, I appreciate you hanging out with me. I will send this out over email so you can get the recording, zoom back through. Again, if you want to book a call so we can dive deep on your situation, matthewdone.com forward slash talk. But I really appreciate you hanging out with me. This is a nearly an hour of your precious time, and it means a lot to me. And I hope that we can get better results in your life and figure out how to leverage that nine to five to create this much better life. It is entirely possible. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day.